But the hour is coming, and now is, here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. We bow for a moment of prayer. Almighty God, Creator, You made us in Your image and in Your likeness. You breathed Your breath of life into us, O God. And You, O Lord, are so merciful and compassionate that when we strayed from You, You called us to Yourself that You may recreate us that you may make us new creations by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may be transformed once more into your image and your likeness. Gracious and loving God, we gather, joining our hearts in one accord, to worship you and to praise you and to adore you, to acknowledge your majesty and your sovereignty. Let your Holy Spirit, who is with us, O Lord, guide us, teach us, show us your way, Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. scripture reading today comes to us from Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 to 8. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, And these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, 
then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do so diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Let us come to Almighty God in prayer. Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Show us, O Lord, the way that we must go and remove the darkness, O Lord, that we may not stumble and fall. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. A significant part of this battle is the battle for our minds. At the heart of this battle, is an attempt to influence our beliefs, attitudes, and behavior in the direction of the ones exerting the influence. This battle for our minds has intensified tremendously with the advent of technology and the various forms of social media. Over the past few months leading up to the general elections, political parties and candidates have engaged in this battle for our minds to win our votes. The business community is continuously engaged in this battle over the printed and electronic media. And with billboards strewn along our highways and roadways to the point of becoming eyesores, only to influence us to choose their products and services over their competitors. But most of this may be harmless and sometimes even helpful. The most dangerous battle for our minds is the spiritual one, the one that replaces God in our lives with worldly idols. That is why Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, gave us the command, do not be conformed to the world. The word conform means to behave according to the usual standards of behavior that are expected by a group or society. So Paul is saying that our behavior must not be determined by the expectations of society, the world. However, Paul doesn't tell us only what we shouldn't do, but also what we should do. In Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, through the mercies of God, to present your bodies a sacrifice, living, holy, acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. We must not let the urgency of the words he begins this verse with be lost on us. I appeal to you. Some versions of the Bible says, I beseech you. The urgency is for them to understand all that he taught them in Romans 1 and to, to chapter 11. That disciples of Jesus are new creations who no longer live under the law but under God's grace. As the Jewish people had offered sacrifices to God through the years, now the sacrifice we are to offer is ourselves. Paul said that it is our bodies that we are to offer as a sacrifice, not selfishly, but more in relations to society and the wider world. The spiritual discipline that we are to offer as a sacrifice to God is worked out in how we relate to others, to the world in general. Therefore, by relating to other people and the world in a manner pleasing to God is our spiritual worship. And as a result of pursuing our destiny in this way, a transformation comes over us. Verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may know what is the will of God, 
what is good, acceptable, and perfect. We must not conform. Instead, we are to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. So as we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, our attitudes change. Our character is reformed and renewed, and the old becomes new. And the purpose of this transformation is made clear in verse 2. So that you may know what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. We become transformed so that we are able to assess our behavior, our thoughts, our words, to test and discern them and work out whether we are behaving in a manner that is pleasing to God or not, and then transform our behavior accordingly. Paul is absolutely clear. Our spiritual worship must lead to transformation of the mind, which must lead to a change in behavior that is in keeping with God's will for his church, his people. And Paul then provides a list to describe what that transformation looks like. We do not think of ourselves more highly than others. Think with sober judgment. Acknowledge we are many members, but parts of the one body of Christ, each with gifts given by God's grace. And so Paul sums up all that and begins to relate it to further instructions in a beautiful and simple phrase in verse 9. Let love be genuine. That's it. That is the sum total of the gospel life. Let love be genuine. That is our calling as Christians, to share love with one another and with the community around us. That is our ultimate calling as a church. He then explains explicitly how we show genuine love to one another. He says, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing other. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil. Live peaceably with all. Never avenge yourself. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Then he tells us how to show our love for God. Never flag in zeal. Be aglow with the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Clearly, Paul is teaching us that our faith in Jesus is not a passive faith, but one that must be fulfilled by our actions. How we live with one another and with God. And he guides us on how to do it, both as new creations in Christ. In this passage, Paul calls us to renewal and transformation and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is constantly renewing and transforming us so that we will fulfill our destiny as the people of God for this generation. He calls us not to be conformed to the present age. Let us therefore do all we can to move forward together as the body of Christ into the future that God has for us. For this is our spiritual worship.
to God with me now for a time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is only to you that we can come. It is only to you we need to return. For so often, O oh God, we have been found wanting and we have conformed to this world. We have allowed the call of this world to attract us. And we have gone after the glamour and the glitter that the world offers. But Almighty God, you call us to transformation. And you have provided the means whereby we may be transformed. Your Holy Spirit, Lord God Almighty, fall afresh upon us by your Spirit. Regenerate us. Make us once more, O Lord, the new creations that you did at our baptism. Lord God Almighty, help us to love one another as you have loved us. Help us to love one another so that the world will know that we belong to you, that we may become true salt and light, that we may impact the world, that we may bear witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, help us not to conform, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Help us to see things through a new eyes. 
Help us to do things with a new zest and vigor. Help us, O oh Lord, to be your hands and feet in our church and in the communities in which you have placed us. Most gracious and loving God, we ask you, most holy and blessed Father, let your spirit fall afresh upon us. Inspire us, guide us, show us your way so that your will and only your will may be done and your name and only your name will be glorified. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Who taught us to pray together, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen to bow once more in prayer as we go O lord let us walk in faith knowing O lord that the power of the holy spirit is upon us and within us to transform us by the renewing of our minds that we may know and do your will among your people your children and now may the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest remain and abide with us with all of god's people wherever they may be both now and forevermore amen